Hello and welcome to Next.js Conf. I'm so excited that you're here, and I hope you're excited as I am to spend a day learning all about the future of Next.js, picking up some best practices along the way, and connecting with the community at large. My name is Otto Kukic, and I work as a developer advocate at MongoDB. Today, I'm going to show you why I believe Next.js, when paired with MongoDB Atlas, delivers an amazing developer experience, allowing you to build and scale your application regardless of what your project manager throws at you. Let's get to it. The title of my talk today is Building Next Generation Applications with Next.js and MongoDB. And if you know me, you'll know that I'm not one for too many slides. But before we jump into live code, I thought I would spend a minute or two setting up the playing field. Now, we know that developers love Next.js, but why? Is it the technology and features like incremental static regeneration or server-side rendering? Perhaps it's the zero configuration required for a production-ready build. File system routing is a pretty nifty feature, but I bet what it really boils down to is the ability to easily create API endpoints allowing developers to easily expose data to multiple clients. I'm just rambling off features of the framework, and there are many, many more I can list off, but I don't think it's any of these features in isolation that make Next.js the logical choice for developers. No, I think it's something else. I think it's related to the Dunning-Kruger effect. And if you're not familiar, it is a cognitive bias in which individuals with low ability or little exposure at a task greatly overestimate their skills or comprehension. To translate this to developers, when you pick up a new language or technology, whether it's a language or framework like Next.js, and run through the quick start guide, you feel like an absolute rock star. But as soon as you go to build something on your own, you quickly run into issues and roadblocks and setbacks. And only when you really work at it and dedicate the right amount of time, sift through the docs, ask questions on Stack Overflow and so on, will you start feeling like you know the technology. So many technologies, languages, and frameworks are susceptible to the Dunning-Kruger effect due to their complexity. Next.js, on the other hand, is one of those rare frameworks that I believe is not. It is a complex framework for sure, but the team and community have put so much work behind it to ensure that the developer experience is superb. From features and APIs to the documentation to the community offering help, guidance, and examples, Next.js is easy to pick up, master, and extend. Every time I run into potential roadblocks with Next.js, like loading third-party libraries that required the window element, which breaks server-side rendering, I was able to find a recommended solution that just made sense in minutes. And in my case, it was using Next.js's dynamic imports with SSR disabled. In this talk, we'll take a look at how we can extend Next.js to work with MongoDB and the MongoDB Atlas platform all while maintaining that balance of productivity, developer experience, and ability to quickly and easily iterate that Next.js developers are used to. MongoDB Atlas is a database as a service offering that removes the complexities of management, scaling, and deployment, and allows developers to quickly connect their applications to their data. MongoDB Atlas is not just a cloud database though. In addition to the MongoDB NoSQL database, Atlas provides a Lucene-powered search for your data, a serverless platform with GraphQL support built right in, and all of this is fully managed for you across a multi-cloud environment. There are many more features and functionalities I can talk about, and you can learn all about them at the MongoDB Discord booth, so find me there and we'll keep the conversation going. But for now, let's jump into some code and see how easy it is to utilize some of these capabilities with Next.js. All right, let's get to the code. The best way to get started with Next.js and MongoDB is to utilize the with MongoDB example, and that's what we'll do here. So let's create a new Next.js application by running npx create next app, and we'll pass in 
the example parameter with MongoDB and we'll name our application next BNB. While the package is installed, I do want to give a shout out and a public thank you to Ash Connell and Matt Carlota for contributing to the with MongoDB example and fixing some of the connection pooling issues that I ran into. Now that our example is downloaded and package is installed, let's open up our directory. To connect our Next.js application to MongoDB, all we'll need to do is provide our MongoDB connection strings to our environment. We can find these connection strings within the MongoDB Atlas dashboard, but this also works with any installation of MongoDB. So if you have a local installation, a Dockerized deployment, or MongoDB already deployed on your own cloud, this will work just fine. Before we connect our app though, let's talk a bit about the app that we're gonna build and how we'll do it. So due to COVID-19, we have been tasked with modernizing a property booking website called NextBNB. We have a data set in MongoDB Atlas, and we want to connect it to our Next.js powered front end. We want to allow the user to discover properties, get additional details about them, and even search for the right place. And we'll start by exploring our data set and connecting MongoDB to our application. So let's go to our browser and look at the MongoDB Atlas dashboard. All right, so let's sign in to our MongoDB Atlas dashboard. We'll hit sign in. I'm going to log in with Google and my account. Once we are authenticated and on the MongoDB Atlas dashboard, to get our connection strings to connect to our data, all we have to do is click the connect button, connect to your application, and we will see our connection string presented here. So what I'll do is copy the connection string and paste it into the MongoDB URI field. And I'll have to update the password because that's not provided by default. And in my example here, my password is MongoDB. And the database that we're going to connect to is called sample Airbnb. And again, we'll provide that here as our database name, Airbnb. Let's take a look at the sample Airbnb database and see what kind of data is held within it. So I'll go back to the browser. I'll close our connection modal and click the collections button. From here, we'll be able to see all of the databases that are within our deployment. And here we have our sample Airbnb database that has one collection called listings and reviews. And here we have over 5,000 different properties that we can look at. And by default, we get the first 20 displayed and we see all sorts of data. So we can see the, the name of the property, a summary of it, uh, how many bedrooms, what type of property it is, and so on and so forth. And if you're not familiar with NoSQL databases, the really cool thing about them is that you can nest data. So for example, if we take a look at our amenities array, it has a bunch of additional information that in a traditional SQL database, we would have to store in a different table. So this is one example. Um, additionally, we can store reviews, which are objects, which are more, more complex data types directly into this single collection so that retrieving this data is very, very fast for us. And we'll take a closer look into how we can work with this data as we build our application. But for now, let's go ahead and start our Next.js application and make sure that we are connected and good to go. I will also change this env.local to remove the example, otherwise it's not gonna work. So now let's start our Next.js application by running, and, oops, by running npm run dev. And our application is going to compile and be served on localhost 3000. So let's just go ahead and make sure that this works. We'll go back to our browser, open up a new tab and navigate to localhost 3000. And now we see the traditional welcome to Next.js message, but since we are using the with MongoDB example, we have the message Next.js with MongoDB. And the other thing that we really care about is seeing the you are connected to MongoDB message. What this is gonna tell us is that our connection string was accepted, that we were able to successfully connect 
to our MongoDB database. Now, before we build the rest of our application, let's take a look at the code that connects MongoDB to Next.js. It lives here in this utility package and the file MongoDB.js. And essentially, the way that this works is we get our MongoDB URI and MongoDB database from the environment. And then we simply create a function called connect to database that is going to cache our connection. So we don't want to create a new connection every single time a request is made, whether from an API route, a statically generated route, or a server-side rendered route. So once we are connected, we're, we are going to cache our MongoDB um, connection so that we can reuse it. And then we're going to connect to the specific database that, that we want to connect to. And then we're going to return all of that uh, as a promise. And for our example, just on the index page, we have a server-side rendered function. So we're using get server-side props. We are uh, connecting to that database, so we are getting that connection. And then all we're checking for is to see if our client is connected. And if it is, we're going to return true. And if it's not, we're going to return false. And then we're sending that as a prop to our component. Now, in the interest of time, I'm going to fast forward a little bit and create a few pages that are going to represent our UI for the application, and then we'll get back to working with Next.js and MongoDB. So bear with me for just a second. All right, so we've replaced the default welcome page with our homepage UI for the Next BMB app. And if we take a look at what it looks like, all we're doing is mapping over a properties array. So we're going to get a list of properties from MongoDB, and we're going to display that information in nicely formatted Tailwind CSS cards. And we're going to display the property image, property name, the number of guests that it can hold, where it's located, as well as the pricing information. So we have this UI built out, but if we go into our application and refresh, we're now going to see them because we haven't made the call to MongoDB yet to get that data. So let's do that. So we'll start by removing the existing boilerplate code we have here. So we're not going to need the is connected anymore. And instead of the client, what we're going to connect to is our database. So this is going to allow us to work with that sample Airbnb database. And the first thing we're going to do is make a call using the get server side props function. So when our page is loaded, we're going to execute this code and we're going to call database dot collection. And this is going to ask us which collection that we want to search for. And the collection is listings and reviews. And what we're going to execute on this collection is a find operation. So we'll say find. And this is all using the native MongoDB driver. So all of the methods here were created by the MongoDB team to allow you to interface with MongoDB within a Node.js environment. And since Next.js is that, this works just fine. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to sort the data we get back. So we're not going to pass in any parameters to define. We just want to get all the data and we will sort it in ascending order based on its ID. So to sort in MongoDB, you simply pass the sort method, decide which key you want to sort on, and we're going to do underscore ID and we'll say in ascending order. And then we are going to limit our result count. So we only want to get back, say, the first 30 or 40 results. Let's just limit it to the first 40 documents to get returned. And then we're going to call this to array method to convert the cursor to a JavaScript object. Now, if we were to just do this and, you know, let's store this data in a variable so that we can save it. And since this returns a promise, we can use async await. If we were to just do this and just try to pass the data directly to our props, we would get an error. And the error would say, hey, I can't serialize this data. You know, you're using all sorts of BSON data types that uh, JavaScript doesn't understand. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to map over this data set and just get the properties that we care about. So let's do that next. I will create a new variable called const properties 
and all we're going to do is map over the data we get back from MongoDB. So we'll say data map and property. So every document we get back will be one property. So I think property is a fitting name here. And then from here, we're just going to return the data types that we care about. So if we go up here and take a look, we have image, name, guests, um, address, summary, and pricing information. So let's return a new object. And we'll set the name property to property.name. We'll set the image to property images.picture URL. And all of these data types, if you're curious where they're coming from, they're coming from our MongoDB database. So if we were to try to find where the images are, they live under images and then picture URL. So we have our image, we have our address, which is property.address. We have our guests, property.number of accommodations or accommodates. And then we have our price and we have our cleaning fee. Now, in our data set, these are set as uh, decimal 128 data types. So we can't simply just say um, property property dot price, for example. If we did, when we go to render our page, we are going to get an error. So to fix this, what we're going to do is we are first going to stringify our price and then we're going to parse it and that's going to give us the value. So, so one way to do this is within this map function, we'll say um, const price and we'll parse and stringify our property dot price. Now what this is going to return is it, it's going to return a object and so so we still can't do simply price because that that's going to return an object uh, what we need to do is say price dot number decimal so so that's going to give us the actual value uh, the actual value the actual price and then for the cleaning fee <clears throat> we're going to do something uh, a little different as well because not all the properties have a cleaning fee. And with MongoDB, you are not required to have each document match a specific schema. You absolutely can enforce a schema on the MongoDB side, but if you wanted to be flexible and if you had a kind of fluid data model that was constantly changing, you may have certain documents that don't have uh, certain fields. So what we're gonna do for the cleaning fee is by default, we'll say that the cleaning fee is zero and then if our property does have the cleaning fee um, property, so it's not undefined, then we're going to set the cleaning fee again to that json.parse, json.stringify, and property.cleaning fee. And then remember, since we are doing this and this is going to return an object, what we can also do is set this cleaning fee to cleaning fee dot number decimal. And then here we can just use the cleaning fee property. And then finally, once we get all of our information, so we're getting the data from the database, we are formatting it to our needs, we are going to pass it as a prop and return that data to our component. And then if we take a look at our component up here, we are um, getting that, that property's data. And then now if we go back into our application, we should see our list of properties. So let's do that. I will go back into my browser, create next app and refresh the page. And if everything worked, we should see a list of properties, but we do not. So it looks like we have an error in our code. Let's take a look. Again, we are live coding. So it looks like we had the wrong collection name. So it should be listings and reviews. We'll save that, go back into our code. So if we go back into our application, refresh. Now we see our list of properties from MongoDB. And it looks like we also did forget an additional 
uh, attribute, which was the summary. So let's do this really quickly. And now we have a lot more information about each of the properties. And then we can click on the details button, which is going to take us to view the details of the specific property. But we haven't built out that page yet. So let's go ahead and do that as well. So in our index homepage, we used the get server side props method, which is going to run every single time we reload the page, we're going to connect to MongoDB, get the latest list of properties and display them. For the listing information, I think it would be a good idea to use the get static props method instead to pre-render and cache this data because I don't think the property listings are going to change all that often. So let's do that in the ID page. So I already created a listing ID page and it looks pretty similar to the index homepage. We're still displaying uh, a bunch of property information. Uh, the big change here is we're only going to display one property at a time. And we're also adding the amenities that that property offers. And again, we're going to get this from MongoDB. Now, if you're not familiar with get static props and static site generation, the way that this works is we run this method at build time to get the data from MongoDB and generate the pages ahead of time. But thanks to Next.js's incremental static regeneration, we are allowed to update pages on the fly as well, giving us the best of both worlds. So let's see how this works. The first thing we'll need to do in a statically generated page is have a method called get static paths, which is going to tell us which paths to pre render ahead of time. So let's create that function. Get static paths. And in this example, we're not going to render any pages ahead of time. So we're just going to return an empty paths array. But we are going to set this fallback property to true. And what this is going to do is it's going to tell Next.js that if we land on a path, um, go ahead and actually run the get static props method and get the data at, at runtime. All right, so let's go ahead and implement this function. And the way it's going to look is we're going to create the get static props function and we're going to capture the parameters which are going to map to this ID here. So we're going to be able to do params.id to get the ID of a specific property. Then let's connect to our database like we normally would. So await, connect to database. And then to get our data, we'll say await db.collection. And again, the collection is going to be the same listings and reviews. But now instead of running a find operation, and I'll do this on a new line, we'll say find one. And in this find one, if we don't pass any uh, additional parameters into this method, we are going to get the first document in the collection, but we want to get a specific property. So the first thing that we're going to pass, the first argument is going to be an object that is going to tell us how to filter and what to find. So we're going to look at the ID field in our MongoDB collection, and we're going to match it to the parameters ID that um, our browser provides. And then we're also going to pass in an options object, which is going to allow us to do a couple of other um, nice things. And the big thing here that we want to do is add a projection. And what a projection is, is telling MongoDB to only return the fields that we ask for. So rather than getting all the data like we did in the homepage example, uh, a projection is going to allow us to get back a subset of the fields within a document. So the documents that we'll want to get back are these. So we're going to get back the name, images, address, summary, price, cleaning fee, and the list of amen amenities for a property. And once we have this, what we'll do, since here we're just getting one item instead of an array, we'll just return our props, which is going to be the property. And then we can do the JSON parse, JSON stringify here, and it's going to be on the data. So we're not creating an additional um, value for it. But we'll need to do one more thing here, and that is add this revalidate field. And what this revalidate is going to do is it's going to tell Next.js how often it should check with MongoDB 
for new data. And in my case here, I'll just set it to one so that whenever we load this page, uh, the next time it's refreshed, we're gonna run this function again and get the latest and greatest property data. So in this way, we would get the best of both worlds. So we would be able to statically generate any of the paths that we provide, but since we have the fallback set to true and we have this revalidate set to set to one or check every second, what it's gonna do is it's gonna allow us to get data as it's added to the database, as it's updated, and we're gonna be able to get the latest and greatest data. So let's go see if this works. I've saved here. Let's refresh and let's refresh our browser and click on one of the properties. And now we get the listing. And again, it's the same information with the addition of all of the amenities that the property provides. And if we go back, we should be able to select any other one. So let's say details here we'll be able to get the information. But again, the reason that we're able to do this is because we have set the revalidate to one and the fallback to true. If we were to change this and say false, now at build time, when, when our application is built, only the paths that are provided in here would get um, statically generated and additional pages we would get a 404 on. So if you go back to the home page and try to click on the details for this property, for example, we'll get a 404. Now, before we close out the talk, I do also wanna show you MongoDB Atlas search and how you can use the Lucene powered search to very easily add search capabilities within your Next.js application. So let's do that next. To add MongoDB Atlas search capabilities to your database, we'll need to create a search index. And the way that this works is, We'll go into our MongoDB Atlas dashboard. We'll find a database that, that we want to add search on and we'll click the search indexes tab. From here, we'll simply create a search index. And here we have all sorts of properties that we can configure. But for our use case here, we'll just set the dynamic mappings to true, which is going to allow MongoDB Atlas to figure out how to create the search index by itself. So we'll hit create index. And this is gonna take a few minutes to build the index. So while it does that, why don't we go ahead and implement our API route? All right, let's go and create that API route. So within the pages directory, we can create a special directory called API. And any file that we create in this API directory immediately becomes an API, a REST-based API endpoint. So we'll create one called search.js. And in here, all we're gonna do is create a handler function to handle the request that comes in. And when we deploy this application, if we deploy it to Vercel, it's automatically going to create serverless functions for us. Otherwise, if we deploy to our own infrastructure, it's going to set up a Node.js um, Express application to handle it for us. So let's go ahead and create this API endpoint. We'll say export default async function and it's just going to be our handler that takes in a request and sends back a response. And the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is connect to our database, our MongoDB database, the same way we connected in the get server side props and the get static props. So we'll get our database by calling connect to database. And we'll have to import this from our MongoDB utility package. So we can use this same call in both the API routes as well as the Next.js routes. And then from here, we'll capture the search term that the user searches for. So let's say const term, and we can get this from the request query and we'll call it term. And now to implement our search functionality, what we're gonna do is we're going to make a call to MongoDB. So we'll say db.collection, and we're still working off of that same listings and reviews collection. And instead of using a find or find one operation, we're going to make use of the MongoDB aggregation pipeline. So we're gonna use the aggregate method to create our pipeline. And if you're not familiar with the MongoDB aggregation pipeline, it is a way to aggregate your MongoDB data, as well as run native MongoDB server operations. And in this case, we're gonna be using one of those, which is gonna be called search. So our first stage in this pipeline is going to be called search. 
and this takes in an object which is a search and for this search capability we at the bare minimum have to pass in two different fields a query and a path the query is going to be the term that we want to search for and here we're using term which is going to be the term that the user provides and the path is going to be the fields within our document that we want to perform the search on so in our case we're going to say description and amenities so when our user searches for things like awesome we're going to look into all of our documents and look at their description and their amenities and if they have the keyword awesome we're going to use that result now that is the first stage of our pipeline we can add as many stages as we want but we'll add just one more to show you how this works and our second stage is just going to be a limit stage which is going to tell us how many documents to return and let's just say 20 documents is good enough finally since we are getting back an array of data we'll call the to array method to transform the cursor to a JSON object and then we'll finally send that data to the browser by using response JSON and sending our data. Let's test our search functionality. Let's go into our browser and let's call that API endpoint. So we'll say API search and for the search term, let's pass in awesome. This is going to give us back a result set where in the description or in the amenities, we have the keyword awesome. Pretty cool, right? But it doesn't stop there. With MongoDB Atlas Search, you have additional features and functionality like typo tolerance to implement fuzzy search, autocomplete, custom scoring, and much, much more, all natively built into your MongoDB deployment. There is so much more I can talk about when it comes to pairing Next.js with MongoDB, but I think that's enough for today. Next.js and MongoDB go hand in hand to provide an amazing developer experience, and I hope that I was able to give you a small glimpse of the capabilities today. I can't wait to see what you will build. If you have any questions, come chat with us at the MongoDB virtual booth, join us at community.mongodb.com, and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.